This is the Lamborghini Sian. That means Thunderbolt. And that means this is a hybrid. Yes, Lamborghini has finally entered the electric era. And as you'd expect, it's not done it subtly. This spaceship of a supercar melds petrol and electricity to generate over 800 horsepower. It is nothing short of the most powerful Lamborghini ever made. So why am I not as excited as I should be? Don't get me wrong, it looks brilliantly ridiculous. But there was a time when a new supercar, especially a new Lamborghini, was a big event. Now it seems there's a new supercar from Ferrari or Lamborghini and McLaren every other week. So, let's see if the Cyan can stand out from the crowd. comes to the whole hybrid thing, the Cyan is also a very different car. The engine is no downsized fuel sipper, but Lamborghini's very large, very thirsty 6.5-litre V12. And unlike other hybrids that you can plug into the mains, the Cyan only gets electricity from its own brakes. It doesn't even have a battery. Instead, it uses something else. Tucked away behind my head, but in front of the engine is something called a super capacitor. It sounds very cool, and it is very cool. Now, a normal battery stores electricity in chemical format, so it has to convert electricity into a chemical, and that takes time. That's why your battery takes time to charge. But a super capacitor stores electricity as electricity, which means it charges much faster. But most importantly, it can chuck it out much faster too, which means instant power. So when you brake hard into a corner, you see it recharging. And then when you accelerate out the other side, you see it boosting. Clever stuff. So why isn't every hybrid, in fact, every electric car, using supercapacitors instead of batteries? Firstly, they're expensive. Which explains why the Cyan costs... Well, Lamborghini won't tell us exactly how much it costs, but we're talking about a million. Plus another million and a bit. Secondly, supercapacitors don't hold as much juice. About a quarter of the power of an equivalent-sized battery. In fact, the motor in your Cyan only adds about 30 horsepower power that is only used for a bit of extra low-speed shove and to smooth out the gear changes in what is a rather antiquated gearbox. Really? Once you're up and going fast, this doesn't even feel like a hybrid. I'm barely aware of anything battery-related going on. All I can sense is that wonderful V12 screaming away behind me. Truth is, under the deranged bodywork, this revolutionary hybrid is a bit of a gimmick. Really, it's an Aventador. A car we first saw a decade ago, now with a very small amount of added electricity. And in this age of cutting edge, dripping with tech, do it all for you supercars, it has to be said. That really does make the Cyan stand out from the crowd. This could 
couldn't be more different to a super clever Ferrari SF90. This isn't Lamborghini saying, hey, we've made the supercar for the next millennium. This is Lamborghini saying, ah, you know what? We slapped a bit of electricity in there to smooth things over, but ultimately, you're on your own. The CM makes no sense. The back wants to step out, and then the front wants to move around, and I'm fighting it the whole time. It is utterly preposterous. I think that when the next generation looks back from their electric cars and what we were up to, they'll look at these V12 Lamborghinis and say, that was insane. And that is exactly the way it should be. Woo! A Lamborghini should largely make you yourself. That's what this one's doing. Oh, it, it, it just reminds you that, for all the cynicism, it's a wonderfully ridiculous object. This is quite a machine.